Hey everybody. Um I'm just sitting here like what the fuck did we just watch? <laughs> what the hell is going on in Potomac? Okay. So, uh we're here for the review of Real Housewives of Potomac season 7 episode 4, Not All Fun and Games, clearly. All right. So they they actually started off this episode with Wendy and we don't see much of her in this episode. Um, Wendy and Eddie, they're at the park with their kids and they're practicing football and, you know, they're cheering for their kids, you know, like normal parents. She brings up this damn Nigerian lounge that, no, I ain't forgot she want to make a, a two-hour library inside of it and all that other bullshit. Um, and she goes, well, I talked to Peter. He was like, your buddy, your buddy. And I didn't know what he was getting at. He was like, Peter's your buddy. He's not mine. I said, whoop, Eddie, put your foot down. That's what I'm talking about. So, um, then he's like asking her how much and she was like 300,000 is coming from me. She was like, which is good. So it's not a 50, 50 split. And she was like, I'm not sure if I want to go in the restaurant business. Okay. Wendy, Wendy, ma'am, I don't have a degree in mathematics. Not, not a one, but I do know. That when you want to go into a business and you're putting up $300,000, you need to be sure. I don't give a damn how much money you have. $300,000 is a lot of goddamn money. Okay? And you have three kids who I know, considering the way you act, you have every intention to ensure that they go to college and get advanced degrees. I'm going to need you to do better with your money. Okay? Which is the point Eddie was trying to make. All right. He was like, you keep jumping into these different business ventures without a plan. Like, I don't even think like he would mind making, and this is just me. He would mind making the sacrifice if he felt like Wendy had something planned in order. Right. Like, but you can't just throw money like that out. He says she has too much on her plate. I feel like Wendy is trying to make this a storyline. Like we haven't seen this. Um, the black woman who works really hard. Um, she's always working, 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 and she doesn't have time for everything and she's stressed out. Granted, we know that black women had them problems in real life, but I feel like Wendy's trying to make a storyline out of it because Wendy's not good at anything. I just feel like she's performing the act of what it means to work hard. And that, that shit, this shit is whack to me. Also, I'm going to tell you what else got on my nerves. Like I'm not somebody who understands a whole lot about labels and somebody may get down in the comments and read the hell out of me for saying this, but I don't care. So... I was looking at her like, why does she have on a Gavinci shirt? Is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> a Gavinci t-shirt. And I don't understand why people wear designer like t-shirts and hats, things that say Gucci um, or Louis Vuitton on it. Like you're out at a park, you have young kids playing football. Why the fuck can't you get an old Navy t-shirt? One of them everyday tees. Why can't you do that? Like, I don't understand what you're trying to prove. Because clearly you bought that shirt. I don't know that any of these designer stores go around throwing in a free t-shirt when you buy something. That's not the, that's not how they brand themselves. Like, why would you spend money on that? Damn, that, that, that kind of shit gets on my nerves. Anyway, so she goes on about how she's mad that she's not invited to Robin's Family Fun Day. I told y'all last week. Wendy, if Robin is hosting it, you ain't missing shit, okay? There have been enough seasons, whether you've been involved in those seasons or not, to know better. Next, we get Juan and Robin, and Robin's talking about the family fun day that Wendy's pissing on because she didn't get invited to, whatever. So Robin claims that they, one of the things that she thought about, I guess, finally with season seven, was that they never get together with their kids, just the women, fair weird but fair okay so when they're practicing those little sack races in their yard it's Juan, robin and the two boys and she was like you forget your father was a world-class athlete and one of the little boys because her kids got smart mouths said he was a world-class bench player and Juan cut his <laughs> cut his head and his eye and was it me or did Juan look like he wanted to be his son's ass he said, oh, is that, you said bench player, is that what you said? I think he thought he said bitch player. And that's what made him mad. But I also think Juan cut his eye like that at his son. Okay. Because he don't let them kids talk to him like that off camera. And what he didn't want and what he typically probably does is pop their ass. Because see, they fall in the line when Juan's around. They just do whatever when uh, Robin's there. 
something told me he was like for the cameras i don't feel like being bothered with cps but somebody gonna get their ass popped they keep it up anyway so um robin's idea to include wendy because she says well if it's about the kids let's have auntie candace who is not like wendy's best friend or anything bring wendy's kids that's a terrible idea and one's like i think that's a good idea both of y'all, which I was dumb asses, coming up with that dumb ass reason. That's stupid. Just leave them out. That's dumb as hell. And I would not send my kids nowhere with another grown adult who doesn't like me, who told me I wasn't welcome there. And then say, oh, your kids can come. Why? Why would I ever trust you? Why would that ever be a good, like, Robin, this is why I don't like you. You don't stand for nothing. Just don't be weak. If she's not invited, she just ain't invited. Fuck it. All right, so Candy Candace was like, basically, Wendy's going to tell me to go to hell. And I'm glad you knew that. I'm glad you had enough self-awareness. Moving on, Juan and Robin talking about Giselle and Chris. Chris doesn't owe Giselle a goddamn thing. She owes him an apology for besmirching his name. Okay, next. So Karen talks to her daughter, Raven. I thought that was kind of cute. Um... Karen's body's not digesting chicken. I'm really sorry to hear that. I will still be eating chicken. Uh, her conversation with her daughter, like I said, was cute. Shout out to Raven for being 24 in the Met Gala carpet. Um, Not my thing, but I know that's a big ass deal. So Karen asked her what she thinks about the fact that her father, you know, Ray, is not okay with her changing her breasts. And Raven said, oh, not coming for you. <laughs> and Karen said, he came for me just like that. And Karen was in the confessional like, well, you know, I'm a good mother. I'm a great mother. And I don't um, think Ray was implying that she was a bad mother. I certainly don't think she's a bad mother. I know she's a good mother. I think what he was really, one, I do think it is his insecurity at this point in his life. But I also think for Ray, he was just making a larger point about what is the, what's the impression that we're giving, not only our daughter, but other young women who are altering their bodies and everybody doesn't have money like Karen to go to the right doctors. So I, I just think that was his larger point. But anyway, so we get introduced to Ashley and her publicist, who apparently has been part of the sh Ashley's life for many years. We just haven't seen her on the show. Okay. So her publicist is like, look, uh, Ashley's like, well, I, you know, I don't want people sending me pictures or the gossip. So I feel like we need to put out a public statement in the event that somebody sees Michael basically doing fuck shit. Because Michael's going to do fuck shit. And Ashley knows it. And like I said from the gate, I think she's just trying to cover this up with a quote unquote legal separation so she don't have to hear about this bullshit. That is not the way life works, Ashley. But okay. So her publicist is like, um, we need to be realistic though. People are still going to send pictures and trolls will have something to say. So you need to be prepared. All right. Whatever. So then they get to family fun day. Like I said, what the fuck did we watch? Mia's on her way with her kids. You know, her kids are cute. Her, her other son was like, I have friends. I have other things to do. Hello and good morning. Okay. Anyway, so Mia said, you see the Mormon church? My stepmom used to take me there. And like the little girl was like pointing. And then Mia, <laughs> Mia was like, it looks like Disney World, doesn't it? I'm like, I just want to go. I can't. Why is Mia so fucking dumb? Like that was just dumb. And... Then the next thing you know, she's talking about her birth mother, her biological mother or whatever that we've seen on the show, her mother, um, and her addiction. And Gordon just seemed really over it. Like the producers told Mia she should discuss her mom in the car. I hope that's what it was, but Mia is dumb. And Gordon just seemed like, oh my God, one, I don't feel like going to this. Two, I'm going to indulge her because she's my wife, but this shit is on my fucking nerves. Okay. Gordon was over it. And. And I understand it. Next, Giselle's bringing her oldest daughter to Family Fun Day because the twins had other things to do. She's Her daughter is very beautiful, just like the other two. The girls are gorgeous. Was it just me? I feel like, I don't know, for some reason, I feel like I didn't see their taglines. I didn't hear their taglines for the past three episodes, but this episode I did. And Giselle was like, I'm pretty, I'm petty, and something else. And I was like, Giselle really has this thing and I'm and I do believe when Giselle was younger she was very pretty um and I don't think she's a bad looking woman now but I think she is the kind of person who has depended heavily heavily on the 
her appearance for so long. And that's why she's such an empty, miserable person. Because at some point, you run out of gas with that and you need more substance. Anyway, but her daughters are beautiful. And obviously, and I think they're very smart young ladies. And that has nothing to do with them. So Karen shows up, but she's talking about her allergies. And we know, we saw her throwing away chicken. Um, anyway, Giselle asks um, Jacqueline about her husband. She was like, are you with your ex? I thought y'all were divorced. Giselle, I have never seen somebody so fucking obsessed with other women's relationships with their husbands on TV so consistently. I don't think that y'all might want to drop down in the comments and let me know, but I haven't seen it to this degree. Giselle cannot fucking help herself. And that to me just says she is so unhappy. Like, bitch, give it a rest. You don't even like Mia like that. Why are you talking to her homegirl, Jacqueline? About, it doesn't matter if they got kids and her husband is there or ex-husband, whatever he is, her PP, her parenting partner. Like, yes, because they have children together. That says a lot about your co-parenting relationship, Giselle. The fact that, that seemed odd to you. Next, um, they asked where Juan is. Juan doesn't come. We're shocked. We didn't see that one coming at all. So Karen uh, shows up and Karen was like, <clears throat> Robin, where's Wendy? <coughs> and so Robin tells her the story. He says, well, she denied the invitation. And if it was about the kids, she would have let them come. Karen said, Robin, what you did to Wendy was wrong. It was just dead ass wrong. She said, y'all should know how to act without me. I should be able to take a sick day without y'all cutting up. <laughs> I said, I'd be damned. Golly, Robin, I don't understand why you coming for Wendy. Like, Wendy came hard for Giselle last season, and rightfully so. Let's be clear. Giselle attacked her marriage and her family the same way she had done to Monique, but everybody thought it was cute when it wasn't them. I don't understand why Robin is so pressed. Like, I don't even know, like, where the origin of this bullshit is like i'm trying to figure it out but then again i'm not so anyway karen is like why would she send her kids with somebody else so karen starts coughing and that's when sharice shows up and as far as i'm concerned sharice didn't even show up with any kids but wendy wasn't invited that's just stank honestly if i was sharice why the fuck would i come to some bullshit like that if i don't have no kids i wouldn't want to I mean, it's one thing if you show up to, like, your baby cousin's football game or something. They're just hanging out in the park. I mean, I guess maybe that's what, maybe Sharice ain't nothing better to do. So, Karen says she needs her Z-Pack for her allergies. Now, Robin says, no, Karen is just going to the car and leaving because you're here. Very possible. We know how Karen is, but at least Karen gave a good excuse. And, you know, Mia tried to help her with the water and stuff like that. But we did hear her talking about her allergies. And quite frankly, when I don't like nobody and I feel like I'm around too many people that are just going to go and fuck shit, I get the fuck out the way too. So if that makes me messed up, then so be it. Um, Candy shows up and says hello to Sharice. Um, she exchanges pleasantries with Mia. Mia, she said hi. She, she did try to at least pretend to say a nice hi to Mia. And Mia was like, hey. <laughs> I said, I can't. She looked at, she, Candace looked at Giselle and said, hi, Grace. <laughs> I am done. But I mean, that to me is what, honestly, what you do. I'm sorry. No, I'm not going to take it out on anybody's child. That's an example of not taking it out on somebody's child. You know, like you speak to Grace. Grace is old enough to pick it up, but that's not the point. What Giselle has done is fucked up. And the, the thing for me with Giselle this is the beauty of watching a show and not really being on nobody's <laughs> Um, It's the level of shock she operates under when somebody is like, fuck you for what you've done. And honestly, Candace, girl, you would have had some motherfucking backup had you not thrown Monique under the bus because she was your friend. Now she ain't because she beat your ass and you deserved it. She ain't beat it good enough. Anyway, um, so yeah, Candace was making a point. It is amazing to me how people make up lies for attention. And my thing is, 
Mia in the corner, and Mia knew exactly what Candace was referring to after she has talked poorly about Candace's husband as well with some bullshit she made up. And yes, Candace is right. Y'all are doing it for attention. And I'm just like, and Mia got up, but Mia, if you gonna tell Robin, you gonna let that spread around the group and tell fucking Candace to her face. Cause you lying. Anyway, so Ashley comes, she comes late with her two kids who are, who are really cute. Um, and she talks, she says, well, today's been tough. Michael has a vasectomy. That's not something I would share, but Ashley has a tendency to be weirdly honest. And I do say weirdly honest, like she'll bullshit a lot. And then she'll tell parts of her personal life that are just too personal with people who don't know how to shut the fuck up. So anyway, Mia and Jacqueline are basically all been her fucking business about why he's getting a vas vasectomy. And she was like, well, he thinks I'm trying to get pregnant. That's part of why we haven't been intimate. Ashley, there is nothing about this relationship that I truly understand other than the fact that you had a white father who clearly rejected you, which I feel very bad about. I would never laugh or make fun of anybody for that. There's nothing you can help, but it seems like, like that psychologist told you that time you went for therapy, that doesn't it seem like there's a lot of similarities with Michael feeling a void in your life that your father did not. She's not the first person to have that problem, but I really feel like at this point, like that has, to, it's hard for me to understand why she stayed. She doesn't seem like she's in love with him to me. I, not to me. Um, so anyway, me and Jacqueline just all been her damn business. And um, Ashley was like, yeah, and he wants to have threesomes. And Jacqueline was like, I had the same problem. Like he told me it was spice of our relationship. Then he wanted to do it all the time or whatever. And so Ashley was like, are you bisexual or what? And she was like, I don't know what I am. Mia goes, she's bisexual. <laughs> I just can't. So uh, apparently Ashley and Jacqueline have similar husbands. I, When people say, oh, an open marriage is up to people and that's their business. And to that degree, yeah, I guess it is their, it is their business. But to me, that's not marriage. I don't understand the need to get married knowing you want to have sexual relationships with other people. Like you go in knowing that what the fuck is the point? And I'm not even one of those conservative people, but I'm going to make this goddamn point that marriage is between two people who love each other and make a, a commitment before God in this process. And so when you say, oh, as long as there's an understanding, no, no, marriage is sanctified. I don't even understand that thinking. But that's how I know people are really tied to these ideas in society about, I have to have a husband. I have to have a man. Even if this is the kind of life I'm living, even if I'm unhappy. And that's not good. It's not good. Ashley's a beautiful girl. She's a beautiful woman. Like, you look at her and you go, Michael's the best you could do? Because people get impatient and they don't want to wait for something better. But that's just my two cents. And whatever. So, um... Then Ashley gets a call about how her separation has hit the blogs. That's not the part I care about. What I care about is the delusion that Ashley was putting out there. When she said, when she actually sat up there and seriously fucking asked her publicist and said, I don't know who in the world would possibly have given my personal information to a blog. You know, I keep my circle tight on purpose. It's very, very small. I said, bitch. Are you serious right now? Are you serious? Are you seriously saying this in front of the cameras? Like you didn't tell a series of cast members who also talk shit about you to other people. And why would you ever think Giselle Bryant would be above that? I'm not saying it was Giselle, but I'm just saying just in the basic overview of your so-called circle, why the fuck would you think any of them would be above that? Ashley, girl, <laughs> I'm going to need you to get it together. Once again, your separation is real. That would be public because that requires public information to a degree, so on and so forth. You didn't have to tell nobody about them threesomes. You didn't have to tell nobody about Michael's vasectomy. So when I say she's really honest, that's what I mean. 
once again, I don't know what the fuck I just watched, but Real Housewives of Potomac, y'all keep my interest, and I like it, and it's good. I'll see y'all soon, but y'all, um, you know, my channel is just starting, so y'all can put some comments down. Let me know what y'all think. Um, yeah, and I'll see y'all soon. Bye.